Hey everybody, so in this session we are going to take a look at Bot Framework Composer and we'll see how we can use this designer to drag and drop your way through chatbot development. The first thing that we'll look at is what's involved with traditional chatbot development using the dedicated SDK. Next, we'll take a look at Composer and we'll see how that the tooling has effectively democratised the chatbot development effort. We'll see what's involved in building a chatbot with Composer and we'll create a simple chatbot. And finally, we'll test this chatbot using the Bot Framework Emulator. So we'll take a quick look at what's involved with traditional chatbot development. So when you're building your chatbots, you have a few different dialogue types that you can use to build your conversational logic. You've got containers, components, waterfalls, prompt dialogues, and adaptive dialogues. A container is the, the base class for all types of dialogues, such as the components and adaptive dialogues that we can see further down towards the bottom there. And it maintains an inner dialogue set that basically allows you to treat a collection of dialogues as one package. The component dialogue is a, a general purpose type of dialogue that encapsulates a, a set of dialogues and it, these let you basically reuse dialogues. Um, further down we've got the waterfall dialogue and that's one of the most popular types of dialogues that developers tend to use when they're building uh, conversational logic and with the waterfall dialogue you can create a sequence of steps that basically navigate your user through the conversation. Uh, finally we've got prompt dialogues, those are the, the low level inputs that the user can um, uh, supply to the chatbot, whether it be numbers, strings, dates and times, and those are sort of like micro dialogues within their own sense. And finally we've got adaptive dialogues, and these are these are flexible, uh, are, are more flexible than the, the others that we've just mentioned. And under the hood, this is what Composer actually works with. But before we jump into Composer, what we'll do now is we'll jump into Visual Studio and we'll see a, a simple chatbot that actually implements some of these concepts. The main things that we'll look at is the, the waterfall dialogue and the, the sort of the ceremony that's involved in terms of setting up a conversation, getting user input and displaying that back to the human. So here we're in Visual Studio and if we just look up to the top here, we can see that we've got a dialogue called User Profile Dialogue. And the first thing to look at is the constructor here in at line 17. And between lines 17 and 32, we've got a bunch of things going on. We're passing in the state and then we're creating a property to access that state and assigning that to a local variable. Between lines 23 and 31, these are where the waterfall steps themselves are set up. So between lines 25 and 31, those are what we call step methods that belong to a waterfall dialogue that we've called waterfall steps. And those are set up within an array. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can see we've got from lines 35 through to lines 40, we're setting up the prompt dialogues. So at this part here, we're capturing some text input, some numbers, where we need to provide the user with the option to supply a choice and potentially let the user upload an attachment. And then finally what we do is, is we set the initial ID for the dialogue to run. Now, if we look a little bit up further between line 25 and 31 here, these are the steps that will be carried out in order. And they will ask the user for their name, their age, if they want to load up a, or upload a picture, and then they'll be asked to confirm their information. And then that information will be um, output back to them in the summary step and we can take a quick look at one of these if we just right click and go to the definition we can see here that we are, we're passing in the step context and then we're giving the user a prompt that says please enter your mode of transport and we're giving them three choices of car, bus and bicycle. Um, so there's quite uh, a bit of code involved in just creating the dialogue in the various steps and you've got to pass the state between each dialogue and read it back. We won't go through all of the individual step methods but we can see here we've got another one where we are um, dealing with the, the name that's being input. So on line 62 we're taking the transport method that was supplied in the previous step. We're reading that back from state and then we're giving the user another prompt 
that says, please enter your name. And that's and the data gets passed through the waterfall and sequence, and then we output that information at the other end in a summary here. So that was a, a quick introduction and an overview of like more traditional chatbot development. So what we've seen is, is we've got a, a user profile, custom class or dialogue that's implemented a waterfall with some prompt dialogues to collect user to collect user information and how that information is then passed through the various steps and then output at the end. Next, we'll see how we can build a dialogue and chatbot using Bot Framework Composer and we'll see how different this is and how little code we actually have to write. So before we start building a chatbot with Bot Framework Composer, it's worth taking a few moments just to have a quick run through of the main sections that, that form the tooling. Um, to do that, what we'll do is we'll just click on create a new template and create from scratch. Composer does its thing and when the template has been set up, we can see that the screen has split up into four main columns. So from left to right, the first one that we can see is the main menu and that gives you access to the various configuration options, uh, the designer canvas, the responses that the bot can see, the user input values and more recent additions to Composer are integration with the Q&A Maker service and the skills capabilities. In the next column, what we see here are the navigation panes for the chatbot that you're building. This is an empty chatbot. It only has one dialogue in there called greeting and we can, we can click on that. And when we do, we'll see that the designer canvas in the middle updates to reflect that selection. And then finally, on the right hand side, we have a properties pane. And it's there where you basically tweak and configure the dialogues and the, the widgets that are in the designer canvas. So for example, if I click on this widget here, we'll see that the properties update over there and uh, we can then set them. So most of the action takes place in the designer canvas, which we can see in the middle here. And when you start building out your conversational logic, it's, it's just a good practice to create one or many dialogues to help serve that conversation. And the way that we can do that is by just using the menu up at the top here, okay? So if we wanted to add a new dialogue to this um, this template that we've got, we just click on add, add a new dialogue. We give it a name. We could say call get username. It would then be updated. And we'll see that underneath that dialogue, there's a little lightning bolt that says begin dialogue. Now that if we click on that, that's a trigger. And that fires when this dialogue begins. And if we look over in the designer canvas, we've got a little node here that we can click on. So we can say we want to add um, a new response or ask the human a question. And you get quite a few different options here. I won't go through all of them, um, but to send the message, you would typically say, uh, send a response and then you would type in the response and we could say something like hi I'm a user profile bot now that's just going to send a message but it's not going to ask the user for any input and to do that what we have to do is to use a different type of node so we can do that by saying ask a question and that could be a text question and we could see here okay um, our bot might ask the user the person's name. And then we'd select this node here, and this is where we capture the user input into a variable. So here, I've clicked on the user input node. We can see that the column in the right-hand side has updated and refreshed, and we have to supply it with a property that will then store the user's name. And we can do that just by clicking in here, and then writing in um, an expression or a scoped variable. Now, when you're building chatbots, you get just like regular programming, you've got various different scopes that you can store variables in. Uh, some of the more, more common ones are the conversation scope or the user scope or even just the dialogue scope. But just for the purposes of this session, I'm just going to use the dialogue scope. And what that means is that this variable will be available as long as we have a running dialogue within our chatbot. 
So I'm going to call that dialog.username. We'll click on this tab here and in the, under the prompt configurations, we'll scroll down a little bit and there's a, a setting that says always prompt. So by setting that to true, that means our chatbot will always ask the user for their name. So we've just created a new dialog, we've sent a welcome message, we've asked the user for their name and we're storing it in a variable. The next thing that we can do is just to echo that data back to the, to the human. So what we can do is, is we can send a response back to the person and we can say something like, hi, and then we use the following notation, which is open brace, dot username and what we should see is is when we run this chat bot uh, the human will be asked or <laughs> I'll be asked for my, for my name I'll supply it and that name will be echoed back to me but before we use this what we have to do is basically call this dialogue when the chat bot starts so we've got our dialogue called get username and we have to find somewhere to call that so if we go back up into the greeting node and we'll see here, this is what happens when the uh, the chatbot first starts. And what we can do here is just add a new node, select dialogue management, and then begin a new dialogue. We can see over to the right hand side here that we now have to tell Composer which dialogue we want to start. So we'll say we want to start get username. So all the pieces are in play now. The next thing that we have to do is just start our chat bot and then run it and test it using a tool called the Bot Framework Emulator and that's what we will do next. So now we want to test our chat bot and we can do that using the Bot Framework Emulator tool and that's free and it's available online for you just to, to download. And the way that we do that is just by, in Composer, clicking Start Bot. And under the hood, Composer and the Bot Framework Runtime are going to take all the assets that we've created using Composer and we're going to generate our chatbot endpoint. So now that the Test and Emulator link is available, we can click on that and the Bot Framework Emulator will load. We'll get a little firewall message here. We'll just accept that. And we can see here, we've got a couple welcome messages and there's our dialogue get user profile. It's asking us, what is our name? I'll key in my name. And then it's just echoed that information back to me. So if we open Composer again and go back into the dialogue, we can just see, hi, I am the user profile bot. What is your name? It gets stored in here and then it gets output in the activity down towards the bottom here. So what we've seen here is like a very simple uh, chatbot. We're just, you know, asking the user for their name and then we're echoing it back. But we've covered a few of the different concepts. Now, in the real world, this, this would be useless, okay? Let's get real. This chatbot would be useless. In the real world, typically what you would have would be um, a, a natural language understanding service such as Lewis sitting in front of your chatbot, interpreting the, hu the human's initial utterance and then branching that off via an intent and handing control over to your dialogue that say was responsible for handling bookings or processing an order or calling into another service. And in fact, that's what we're going to look at just now. So. I've got another demo prepared here in the sense that if we click on this new chat bot here, so this is a chat bot that will ask you for a search term. It will then ask you how many tweets that you want to return and it will then make a call out into the Twitter API and bring back tweets that match your search term. So it's just a regular chat bot, but it's got a few different components. So if we click on the unknown intent. So I touched on intents a little bit earlier. A common pattern when you're building chatbots is to handle specific utterances and grouping them per intent. 
Now, for the purposes of this demo, we're just having the, the bucket of unknown intent, and that will just handy any utterance that we supply at it. But the first thing that the chatbot will do will be to ask the ask us for a search term. We'll take that search term, we'll store it in this variable here. We'll then ask the user how many tweets that they want to fetch back from the Twitter API. And then this is the key part here. So here we're sending an HTTP request to the Twitter API and we're passing in the search term and the number of tweets into this URL. If we just click on here, we can see we're setting up the the parameter of the number of tweets that we want to bring back and we can see here for the query parameter we are sending in the term. We've got some authorization being sent over via the headers that we can see a little bit further down here and then when we get that data back from the Twitter API what we're doing is we're taking that response and dumping it into the variable dialog response. Now just to point out here, this is where the real power, or I feel the real power of Composer comes in because you can model your conversational logic, but then you can augment it with data or processes from third party APIs. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the Twitter API, it can be any API or third party system. So you can have extension points throughout your Composer canvas that break out into other systems. Um, and it, being able to do that just makes the whole um, the, the intelligence of your chatbot that much more powerful. A little bit further down here, when we've got the data back from the Twitter API, we just loop through all of the content or the statuses, or basically the tweets that we get back, and then we output that tweet text into the, the console. So we'll test this, and we'll click on Start Bot like we've done before, and when the button becomes active again, we're just going to spin up the emulator, And what we'll see is we'll be prompted for a query and then we'll be asked to supply a, key, a bunch of search terms and a number of tweets that we want to bring back. So here we've got the bot framework emulator. We'll supply an utterance. Now we're handling any utterance here. So now our dialogue's been invoked. Which search term do you want? to look for. So we will just say Christmas, how many tweets? We'll say 15. So at this point we're branching out into the Twitter API and we've got the data back. So we can see here if we scroll up and we can see we've got references to Christmas. So we've got the keyword Christmas sprinkled throughout most of these tweets. So what we've seen here is an example of how we can create dialogues using Composer, how we can use Composer to manipulate variables, and how Composer can break out into third-party APIs such as the Twitter API, and how that data can be manipulated. Again, this is just a pretty trivial example. However, when you start to build your chatbots using Composer, what you'll find is it becomes very intuitive in the sense that you no longer really need to be a developer. You do need to have a little bit of technical knowledge, but it's not without the realms of possibility for the product manager, the business analyst, or even a support person to start modeling process flaws, maybe in Visio or PowerPoint, and then migrating those over into Composer is almost like for like with a little bit of training. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. Um, if anybody has any questions or would like to know more, you can reach me on my blog at jamiemaguire.net or feel free to contact me on Twitter. Okay, and um, thank you everybody for their time. I hope you got some value out of this.